Welcome back, this is Andrew Klein with video 4 of my compositing tutorial series. In this video we're going to take a look at how to calculate a depth pass and uh, what the depth pass is useful for. Uh, in this shot, uh, this is the shot where I have my character, he uh, sits up and uh, kind of looks around and takes in the uh, vista which he's kind of sitting in. Uh, it's a sort of big, open, expansive world. If I zoom back out, you can see this giant world that I've uh, created here. And uh, you notice I've actually removed out the building, the main building, so I could put my camera inside the building for this shot. But uh, that's somewhat inconsequential for what we're looking at here. Uh, what I have, you know, this is sort of my camera placement, and this is his uh, his view. The um, shot itself, uh, I needed a depth of field to create this blur in the background. Uh, and you'll notice if I... Uh, take my shot and I can kind of like um, jump to a different point in my timeline here. Let's see if uh, After Effects will cooperate with me while I've got a bunch going on. You'll notice I even did a rack focus here where I changed the depth of this shot. Now what I was actually using was this depth image. It's a gradient uh, with white in the foreground going to black in the distance where it's really kind of giving me uh, an accurate depiction of what's receding back into space. Now I used this, um, as I said, to kind of create that rack focus. And in After Effects, uh, what I had done was applied a uh, lens blur filter using my depth map, which I have here in my scene, using my depth map to blur out the scene based on distance. We can come back to all of this later when we talk about the actual compositing of this. But again, I just I want to bring up that that's what this depth map is for. Uh, we need to make sure that we have some sort of gradient that tells me distance in space. So here inside of Maya, uh, what I need to do is I need to establish this depth shot. And I could put this on the master layer, or I can make a separate layer to calculate out the depth. Um, it's really dependent on the needs of your shot to do this. Uh, I'm actually going to make a separate layer to calculate this out uh, because I'm going to use that separate layer for an alternate purpose as well. I feel I really only need to uh, measure out the depth once, so I may not need to re-render out all of those frames to get this done. Well, to make my new render layer, uh, I'm just going to go into the hypergraph and uh, I am going to select all of my geometry all of my foreground geometry here. And um, here's my character. This scene's a little bit less organized than what you saw in my previous scene. Sorry about that. I'll select all of this. And I am not going to select my lighting this time. For this layer, I'm not going to need all of my lights. This is the group that has all of my... Uh, my lights and stuff in it. So you'll notice that that is not selected. I'll just select my geometry and I'm going to make a new render layer. And I'm going to call this layer depth and sky. I'm going to do a twofer with this to be quite honest. We'll uh, talk more about what that sky is useful for in the next video. But um, I now have just my geometry here. Pretty much all my geometry in the world rendered out. Uh, I don't have my sky dome, however. Uh, there's no sky here in the scene. The sky dome that I have, uh, this you know black expanse out here and kind of all of that, is actually part of my uh, lighting layer. So you see if I select this, that's like my sky dome. I have this plane which is creating a shadow for the cloud which is there in the sky dome. And uh, you know that's that's what I have here in uh, this shot. I'm just I'm not including that in this depth and sky layer. Well, what I'm going to do is, uh, in this layer, I'm just going to create a new material in the Hypershade. That uh, in Maya Surfaces, I'm going to create a new surface shader. And I'm going to make this surface shader, if I'll double click on it, I'm going to make this surface shader's out color all white completely white. Make sure it's you know 100%. The value is a full value of 1. Uh, this should be completely white right there. So I have all of that selected. And uh, I am just going to select again all of my geometry here that is in this layer and apply a shader override. So I've got everything in my world here selected. 
I'm going to right click on my material and say assign material to selection. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a, let's see if I can just zoom in on my character here. What this is going to do, it's going to make a new uh, surface shader applied to uh, everything in my shot. Right here, you can see all of that applied in. I've got this white surface shader on every element in my scene. Exactly what I want. So kind of hard to see, so sometimes I turn on wireframe on shaded while I'm in here because it's all one color, and at least now I can kind of see around my environment. So this is full white. Uh, in this environment as well, uh, I am going to get into my camera and change the background color in my camera. Uh, this I'll go to panels, perspective. I have a camera in here called rendering camera shape. This is the actual view from which I'm looking from. I'm going to go to view and choose select camera, which will take me, if I go into my attribute editor, I can scroll down to environment and I can change my background color if need be. Well, I'm actually going to leave it as black here, but if you have a different environment background color, make sure you change that at this point. Well, here's what this gives me. This is what this uh, render gives me by default. I've created a render layer, which I can essentially use as a mask. Let me bring this in here. And uh, options. Let's just do test resolution 25%. Render from my rendering camera shape. Let's see what this gives me. This should render really fast. Actually, it won't because I forgot to change one thing. Uh, but this should allow me to uh, get a very, very fast render if I set this up correctly. Uh, the one more thing that I do want to do to speed this along, because I'm just rendering out white and black. I don't need to render out very complicated render settings. Under Features, in the Features tab in my Render Settings window, I had been using Final Gather in this shot. I'm just going to right-click and create a layer override and turn off Final Gather and right click on ray tracing and turn off ray tracing. All of these fancy render properties I don't even need on. I should now be able to render this out and it should render pretty quickly. There we go, okay. So here's my render mask. It's uh, completely black and white. And uh, for my full resolution one, you can see right here, this one I rendered without my foreground character. It gives me this black and white image. Now the beauty of this is that this smaller size one rendered in only three seconds. But um, again, very, very fast. Uh, let's see what a full-size uh, 1080p render is going to give me. So a little bit longer here to render. This was 11 seconds. But again, this renders really fast. And I now have a cutout that I can use to mask out my character, mask out my foreground from my background. Now I actually use this mask here in my scene in the compositing. Let me just pull off all of these elements here. I use this mask to cut out my sky. And uh, I have another like mask here that I am using for this. Here's what my background image look like uh, by default, I can use this mask to cut out the sky and uh, insert my clouds behind it. It's kind of my uh, plan that I used here. And uh, you can see I can eventually kind of tone this and put all of these other parts back together. This is the uh, eventual composite of this shot, which uh, we may come back to later on. Here's the grass that I'm digitally inserting, and that kind of builds out my field. Well, back here to Maya, what I want to do is I want to make a depth pass with this. And uh, I'm getting kind of two things for one. In this render layer, I made a mask that I can use to cut out the sky. I'm also going to create an image that allows me to see depth in my scene. Now, this is actually really easy to do as well. I first have to determine where I want my gradient to terminate at, how far I want to see before it gets completely blurry. And to see this, uh, I'm going to go into my top-down view. Here, This is my top view. Uh, 
Uh, so I just, you know, hit space bar to jump to my top view. And uh, I'm going to go to create, measure tools, and I'm going to choose the distance tool. I'm going to click the distance tool right around here where uh, the camera is positioned. This is, you know, somewhat relative, but this is pretty much where it is. Here's my camera. Let's go out here somewhere into the field and click again. So by that far away, I don't know if you can see this in the video version, but when I clicked and clicked again, uh, this gave me a number of uh, 523.9 units. Let's just round that up and say 525 units uh, is from you know behind my character to where I want it to be completely blurry, like halfway out into that field. I'm going to use this number to determine the distance for my depth pass. So in this depth and sky layer, uh, I'm going to go into my render settings window and go into my passes tab. And this is in mental ray. I'm using the mental ray render as I've been for all of this. I'm going to go into my passes tab. Here I'm going to click on the uh, white plane clackboard explosion icon. And uh, this time I'm going to choose a render pass called camera depth remapped. And I'll choose create and close. Since I want this to apply to my depth and sky layer in this case and not my master layer, while I have depth and sky selected in my render layers channel box, I'm going to choose depth and uh, depth remapped and click on associate passes with the selected layer. I'll double click depth remapped and here I have some options. So first off, um, in this attributes section, uh, what I'm really looking at are the render pass parameters, and there are these elements down below, the remap depth values numbers. So my near clipping plane is zero. That's um, you know what it's establishing here close up. Whatever is uh, at this number is going to be all white. So anything in the foreground here is going to be completely white in this pass. Uh, here in the distance, uh, this is sort of my far distance, uh, I usually type the number that I see here. So this is uh, 525. That's my far clipping plane. By the time it gets to 525, it's going to be completely black. Now my minimum buffer value is zero. That's what's saying white. And my maximum buffer value is black, or one. That's what's going to say black. So this actually, though, this value, instead of being zero to one, Mental Ray is a little weird with this. This should actually be 0 to 100 from what I have found. So I usually take my maximum buffer value and turn this up from 1 to being 100 to 100%. Otherwise, it goes from white to 99% white. So we need to make sure we go all the way to full black by turning that up to 100. So I've got this established. And uh, if I go back here now, let's just uh, save this scene before I go on. Uh, I will save this as start version 2 for this scene. Once this is done saving, I'm going to do a uh, render. We'll test this out. So in my render settings window here, let's set my image format again to uh, be JPEG. And uh, I'm just going to go to uh, my single frame renderer and do a, let's do a slightly smaller render again because I don't need to see all of this. I'll do a 50% render size. Uh, render, um, and then do a render from my rendering camera shape. Should take a little bit longer this time because it has to calculate the depth. Uh, but again, here's my uh, full render. If I go to File, Load, Render Pass, Depth Remapped, I should get this, although it seems like it's still coming back to here. I do not know where that one went. I think I'm going to just reset my project here real quick to make sure this goes to my desktop. Let's render that again. So there we go. If I load up my depth remapped image, here's my depth remapped. There's my gradient. You can see that fading into the background. I've now got a depth gradient that I can use to composite this. 
can change my exposure. You might be able to see that a bit better there. But this is uh, that depth remapped image. So we again, we can use this later on to create um, the blurs and also fog effects for distance. And uh, we'll kind of get back to that later in the compositing process. Uh, this has been video four on calculating a depth pass. Uh, video five is going to go into more detail on creating masks, such as what you see here. Stay tuned.